Okay guys, welcome back to our advanced DCC series. We are on part 3B. Uh, in the last episode we installed the Digitrax DH165K1A and now we are ready to install the SFX004 sound bug unit. It's a very, very simple process. I'll set this guy down so you all can see what I'm doing. These prongs that are right on there, there's eight of them, are basically going to go into this socket that's right there. Now it's supposed to mount right above the flywheel and underneath the decoder right here into space. If you mount it on the top, it will not work properly and you may run the risk of damaging your decoder. Now to make this fit in here, what you might have to do is just pull the screw out a little bit just so you can slide it up underneath. If you want to pull it all the way out, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. You still have the front screw and holding everything together. And we're going to take this, make sure all the wires are, are clear. You can move these track wires out of the way for just a moment. Lift up and this should just snap right in. Might take a moment to line everything up. But once you do it just pops right in. Now once you have that in, I'll show you an aerial here. It's going to look like that. It comes with two screws that are going to mount right in here, top down. I mean, you can try to bring it from the bottom up, but it's much easier from the top down. And that'll hold it in place. If you would like to go a step further and solder one or two of these pins, feel free, but it's, it's not necessary. and could cause for a, a little bit of a mess. But all we're going to do is we're going to just pop screw it in snug, not too tight where you're going to crack the decoder board and a second screw. Again, just enough where it grabs, makes everything nice and tight, nice and snug, but not overkill where you're going to damage anything. Okay, that's in there pretty good. And then the screw that you took out of the decoder, we need to return that to where it was. Okay, nice and snug. These track wires can be placed securely in their slots. Now, there are a set of wires that come out of the SFX004. Obviously the two to the speaker go to the speaker. The capacitor, blue and black, and there's also a white wire. Uh, that's if you're installing this into a steam locomotive, it's supposed to help with your with your shelf timing. That's this guy here. Now what we're gonna do is a couple of things. We're gonna take this capacitor and on some of the Kata locomotives there's a there's a notch right here where it just slides in you really want to get it as far of the back here as you can so it doesn't interfere with any of the lighting or the speaker mount that's in the rear of the locomotive and we'll just do that with some electrical tape what we're also going to do is we're going to take this stock speaker and we're going to desolder these two wires. There we go. And we're going to put in a soundtrack speaker. This is the, the oval speaker. And we're also going to put it in the enclosure. And the reason for that is this speaker does not fit well 
inside the shell. Now if you have an F unit or a steam locomotive with a tender or if you're putting this in some kind of rolling stock you have uh, you have plenty of room. Uh, also some of the the Cotta locomotives come with a uh, an enclosure hidden in, hidden in the fuel tank that will house a speaker that size. This one does not as well as most of the locomotives out there. This speaker however fits in here very very nicely and you even have enough room for the enclosure or baffle to fit in there as well. Okay I've done a little bit of prep work I have seated the capacitor with some electrical tape if you have another method that you prefer please by all means go ahead and use that but again you want it as far back as you can so it will not interfere with the uh, the headlight or I'm sorry the taillight fixture uh, or the speaker enclosure and in no way you, you want it to interfere with the drivetrain of the locomotive. I have also tinned the connections for the speaker and I have prepped the enclosure by notching out a small area uh, so that when the speaker rests in there uh, the wires are not pinched anywhere in here. And just to give you an idea it'll when it rests all the way in there the wires will still have some room to, to play and breathe and not be pinched up in here. You can use a small drill, you can use a handsaw, uh, a filing knife, whatever, uh, Exacto works too. Uh, whatever method you want to to either notch or create a hole in the sky. As far as doing a speaker, again I'll set this guy down here so you all can see what I'm doing. You can use if you like a desoldering gun, but I'm just simply going to heat up the existing solder on the speaker and remove the wires just like that. Place that in a parts box somewhere and as soon as I get my fingers to grab this. Also not a bad idea to use a heat sink on your wires so they don't burn them. Okay so once you get the speaker soldered in the enclosure and you get it all fitted in there you can do another little test. Now the default sounds on this is a generic steam engine and just to give you an idea I'll play a couple of sounds here. All I'm doing now is just making sure that that it works. And we can tell that it works. Now on your SFX004 manual it will give a number of CV values and things that you can adjust and change things like the bell rate, how often the bell rings per second the volume of the engine, the prime mover uh, the volume of the horn uh, and a whole bunch of other things that can be modified uh, like I said before I will spend uh, some time going in some detail on CV values um, there's been a number of requests out there, how do I do this, how do I do that. Uh, I'll be happy to get to those. Uh, we'll do a little bit more install and we'll go into those in a little more, more detail. So basically what's next is putting this guy back together and we're going to program the sounds with a Digitrax PR3 and make it sound like a SD70 Mac. So stay tuned for Part 3C.